Hi there, welcome to the channel. As you can probably see, my setup is a little bit different to normal. I'm not recording with the same software. Um, I'm not really recording with the header things. There's a guy in my comments that will really like that, but it means that I'm going to go effectively a little bit more off script than normal, which means that I'm less comfortable when I'm recording this video, I guess. So be nice in the comments if it feels like I get rumbly, but in this video, I'm going to talk primarily about the fact that Legion United seem to have missed out on another big target. Not necessarily the biggest of targets, but it's a player that can play in a position that we rather need right now, and it's another one to add onto the list. So, to dive into it quite simply, um, the player that Legion United have missed out on this time is Bashir Humphreys. Chelsea player, combination of left-back and centre-back, played quite a bit for Swansea last season, and exclusively on the left-hand side, so effectively seems to be what we need right now and he's gone to Burnley instead of Leeds United in spite of Leeds having quite a big interest. The deal appears to be a loan for now but it's going to be an obligation to buy for five million pounds and there's a pretty obvious reason that Chelsea want this to be an obligation for five million quid and that is the fact that they need to move their players on. They can only have a squad that is so big next season, and they can only loan out six players, both domestically and internationally, combined next season. Which means that before then, they need to trim their squad a lot. I mentioned this in a video a couple of um, days or weeks back, probably weeks, um, that big Premier League clubs would need to do this. And this was an opportunity to pounce on that, and we would have plenty of these opportunities. And it feels like we've just let one of them slip by which is a problem, because it feels like that is indicative of what Leeds United are doing right now. Letting things slip by, not quite pouncing on opportunities when they come. I've got a list here. I've got a notebook and everything. I've been prepared. Um, but a list of the players that Leeds United have missed out on this window already that we have reportedly made approaches for or put bids in for. So First up, a player that we quite badly need that can play in central midfield and can create chances, Gabriel Sara. Lots of assists last season, lots of goals last season. Ended up going to Turkey instead of Leeds United, in spite of us apparently having an interest. Sami Schmodix, someone else that apparently we had a bit of an interest in, but ended up not opting for, has now found himself at Ipswich, and although they lost to Liverpool, he's still a very, very good footballer. Harrison Burrows, who apparently we tried to steal from Sheffield United when he was about to sign for them. We ended up not doing that which I think turned out to be a little bit of a mistake because we need a left back quite badly. Junior Furpo is good. He's completely fine enough, in my opinion, to start in the championship this season. But if he gets injured or something, big problems. Because behind him is Max Vuba, who I'm not convinced is a footballer, and Pascal Straub, who is definitely a centre-back. We've seen him at left back. It doesn't work out. We've also had Callum O'Hare, number 10, used to be at Coventry, would have been a free agent found himself at Sheffield United instead. And we are flying dangerously close to the sun, with John Rowe eventually, potentially making a decision to not come to Leeds United because Marseille keep being in for him, as do Monaco. And the thing with all of this is it's not just a problem that we can spend all of our time trying to solve. It's a problem with a very, very strict time limit, and I'm going to go and cut to story time, Joe, to tell you a little bit more about that. Good evening. I'm here to talk to you sent in this direction by StreamYard Joe to discuss the timeline for the remainder of the transfer window. On the 18th of August, today, Leeds United have 12 days left to complete any deals that they need to do. And that's looking like quite a few of them. On the 19th, tomorrow, it's very likely that Jorginho Ruter will have his medical and there'll be an announcement at Brighton that he's leaving Leeds United and going there upon the triggering of his release clause. This is probably because there's not likely to be any football tomorrow afternoon, whereas they don't want to sort of have the announcement get a bit lost with the weekend's football. On the 22nd of August, it's the registration deadline for the next EFL match day. That means that anyone that isn't with the club on the 22nd of August will not be able to play against Sheffield Wednesday on the 23rd. The next major day after that is deadline day itself. 
the window closes in line with major European leagues this season because it's a lot easier that way. Clubs like those in Germany don't feel the need to get all their business done sooner than everyone else, which means that it should be a little bit more dramatic than normal and there's more of a chance to do business all the way up to the deadline. This is on the 30th of August, which, fair enough, it's a Friday, why not? And then on the Saturday, 31st of August, Leeds United play against Hull City. Basically, Leeds United need to make four or five deals, at the very least, in around 13 days, assuming we don't end up selling anybody. That sounds stressful. And to steal the words of our favourite transfer journalist, here we go. Back to you on StreamYard, other Joe. <laughs> wow. Thanks, past Joe, that I definitely didn't record before that first segment. Sometimes it's easier to record things out of order. Effectively, what all of this means is that Leeds United are working to a very, very strict time limit. We've got a lot of deals to do. A quicker rate than a deal every three days which is starting to feel incredibly dangerous. And as I'm sat about a 10 minute walk away from Brentford Stadium, all that I can think of is like, why are they so effective at this? And we are so ineffective. What is the difference between them making fast moves like they were able to in the championship, players with good potential, players with an ability to develop that they can sell for profit later and still benefit from? What's the difference between that and where Leeds United are right now? And in my opinion, the difference is that fundamental understanding of what makes a footballer valuable. Yeah, sure, we were signing players that are young and could develop, but they were auto signings. And whilst he was good at the identifying young players, it was his contracts and negotiations that were where he slipped up and are why we've done a hell of a lot of selling. And I think right now we're the other way around. We're in a position where talent identification is not at the same level that it was previously. Sure, the contracts are safer. But you need both at the same time to be successful. And at the moment, to put it kindly, the current leadership has about 13 days to prove itself in terms of that talent identification side. And maybe they will. Maybe they'll succeed at that. My big concern at the moment is there is absolutely no guarantee that that will be the case. And we kind of need it to be the case. Otherwise, we are drastically going to struggle for the rest of the season. A lot of people are putting this on Farker, but when you've had effectively the rug pulled out from underneath you and all of your best players are suddenly gone, it's hard for any manager to succeed. At the moment, the eyes are on the 49ers because I would hope at least one or two signings before Sheffield Wednesday to prove that we're getting something done, ideally two. I mean, I'd love all of the ones that we need through the door, but I don't think that's going to happen. And then after that, we can say, sure, has Farker done what he should be able to with the resources that you've got? But for now, we're still in that resource gathering phase. We're still getting information and we'll see what happens. Ultimately, I hope we get a few signings as soon as possible. That might not be the case, but I guess we'll find out. But at the end of the day, as per, that's just what I think. Sorry it's a bit of an unstructured video compared to normal, but I do, as always, want to know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking down below. Like the, the, <laughs> like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not yet. That's always usually appreciated. Or become a channel member. 99p for a membership for a month. Hopefully people think it's good value. Um, I release all my pre-recorded videos to channel members early, just because I think it's quite nice to give that back. So if you want to do that, go for it. Hope you enjoyed. And I will, let's get the right arm, see you later. Doodle. I'm not recording a video like this again. This is stressful, man. <laughs>